Okay, we are gonna get started. Um, and uh, you just got a notification that we are gonna record this. Um, that's for anybody who, who couldn't make this time work. Uh, and we'll do the same program um, this evening also at uh, six o'clock um, for another virtual open house. Uh, same, same exact content this evening. Uh, I'm Sam Zimbabwe. I am with Kinley Horn. We are the consultant team working with uh, with Skagit Transit on this on this project. Um, thank you, everybody, for making time to join us um, and uh, join us for this virtual open house on um, some work on long range planning for Skagit Transit and uh, connections out to the broader region around Skagit County. Um, we're going to run through this presentation as uh, folks have questions or comments. Feel free to add them into the chat or uh, raise your hand. We're a pretty small group, uh, so I think we can probably um, in, you know, answer questions as they come in. Uh, but the chat or the Q&A function is the easiest way to, to get those questions in. Um, we're going to go through a little bit of background, what we've learned so far in looking at um, transit in, in Skagit County and uh, Skagit Transit Services. Uh, we're gonna talk through some of the draft recommendations that we've come up with to date based on uh, that, that learning so far, and then ways to continue involvement and ways to share out this information, and then also uh, some of our next steps. Skagit Transit has started this work uh, to develop a new uh, long range transit plan um, for a couple of couple of reasons, there's a 2018 strategic plan that has guided uh, Skagit Transit's work in the last few years. Um, but uh, in the last few years, for sure, there have been some opportunities and challenges around transit service. Um, and this plan will help identify immediate uh, improvements, service changes that could happen in the shorter term, as well as a long range vision for connections within Skagit County, as well as uh, throughout Northwest Washington, connecting into um, other services, other transit agencies, other counties surrounding, and then also think about some of the new ways to potentially deliver uh, transit service and meet the needs of uh, community as those have continued to evolve and change. Um, and we're really looking forward to hearing from members of the public, other agencies, um, important partners in informing all of these uh, potential changes. So I'll go through a little bit of what we've learned so far um, and touch on a number of points. There's a little bit more depth to this that we're not going to go into, but if, if folks have any questions as we go through this, um, please feel free to, to ask them and we can either answer them now or follow up with additional information. One of the places we started was looking at the existing travel patterns of uh, Skagit Transit and some of the connections out into the, the broader Northwest Washington uh, region. Um, last year, or from 2022 to 2023, transit ridership grew about 20%, um, but we're still seeing transit ridership a little bit below uh, 2019 levels. The pandemic uh, changed the way that a lot of people get around, uh, and uh, that's certainly been true for Skagit Transit, as well as transit agencies across the state and across the country. Uh, we've also seen transit usage and demand really changing from being a more commute-oriented um, uh, travel pattern to other needs, to getting to services, to shopping. Um, and we see that uh, in the time of day that people ride Skagit Transit. So uh, looking at 2023 data throughout the whole year of 2023, um, we see more people riding in the midday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. than in either of what would traditionally have been the peak hours combined. Uh, and we see lower ridership again in the early morning and late evening, some of which is really reflective of lower service levels that are out there um, on the street at those times. Uh, but it's really interesting to see all of that midday travel and how that reflects the needs of Skagit Transit riders. So thinking about those midday trips has gone into a lot of uh, the potential avenues for uh, thinking about transit service on into the future as well. 
We also took a look at how people are making trips within Skagit County and across uh, some of the county lines connecting to other places. So uh, looking at work trips within Skagit County, there's about 44,000 trips uh, daily where people are making work trips. Um, and we don't have as good data on uh, total trips of where people are, are coming and going within, uh, within Skagit County and the surrounding counties. So really looking at, at work trips, about 44,000 of those work trips on a daily basis, and then work trips crossing over county lines, there's about 25,000. So about half as many um, trips, work trips crossing over county boundaries as happening within Skagit uh, County. And the predominant uh, trip flows that, that we see with that, um, uh, going to Snohomish County, about 10,000 trips back and forth from Snohomish County each day, uh, Whatcom County, a bit over 8,000 trips going back and forth to Whatcom County. Um, Island County has about 5,000 trips back and forth each day. Um, and we have close to 2,000 trips going uh, all the way down to King County. So as we think about some of those work-related trips, um, which again, isn't the large number of transit trips, um, but the, that is a big place of demand, uh, looking at where some of those connections may be important out into the um, into surrounding areas. And as we talked to people over the course of the spring on this project, uh, we heard a lot of importance of the regional connections, uh, the importance to existing uh, Skagit transit passengers of some of those regional connections, um, both for work and for non-work. We also looked at uh, transit needs and um, looking at how the existing transit service serves areas with the highest need and some of the highest ridership potential for transit. And what we found is that Skagit Transit Service uh, really serves the areas of Skagit County that have the highest transit propensity. And that is looking at um, some of the um, the demographic characteristics, some of population age, people with disabilities, income, racial composition that have traditionally tended to ride transit more um, and looking at how that, uh, the, some of those factors overlay to, to create a transit propensity map um, within Skagit County. Uh, and what you see in these, both the full county map and this inset at the bottom is showing the existing Skagit transit lines in this you know, white color um, and those, the deeper red is uh, higher, higher transit propensity areas. Um, and so what this shows us is that trans Seattle Transit's already serving the places that are, have the most transit propensity. Um, and there aren't really a large major areas uh, with the exception of some of the areas of uh, Fidalgo Island that um, where Skagit Transit's not currently uh, uh, serving that have that higher propensity for, for potential transit use. I mentioned uh, before that uh, we talked to um, a lot of Skagit Transit uh, uh, riders and people who don't ride transit over the course of the spring and talked about um, what was important and how people were using the system already. Um, people are heavily reliant on transfers. And, and so that's the way that the service is currently structured and serving park and rides uh, with time transfers where people can get across the region. Uh, but it was really interesting to hear from riders about how often they're taking, uh, making transfers over the course of their transit trips. Um, and then also sometimes when, uh, when people miss a transfer, or if there's a time when they uh, don't quite make it, um, that that could result in a, in a long wait, looking at how the service is structured. We heard a lot of desire for evening and weekend service um, and, uh, and people wanting more um, and better connections to regional services, uh, healthcare, other types of services, shopping, the ferry system, Amtrak, other transportation services. So people are really thinking about how Skagit Transit fits into their connections and trips that they make uh, across, the, across the region. 
We also know that there has, there's a ton of transit investment going on across, uh, across Washington and across Northwest Washington right now that really need to feed into some of these long range plans for Skagit Transit. Um, there, and some of these have been happening even as our project has been going on. Uh, Link light rail is now open to Linwood coming into serving uh, Snohomish County a really important regional investment that um, that will connect uh, more people to reliable high capacity transit across the region. Community transit is planning for the gold line, a new BRT line uh, connecting to Smoky Point uh, Transit Center. The timeline for that is about 2029. So as we think about what a long range transit plan looks like, looking 10 to, 10 to 15 years out, um, we are taking into account uh, future regional investments as well. Um, there are uh, ongoing uh, plans in Whatcom County for enhanced bus service and uh, WTA is doing a lot of work right now to figure out what their future network looks like and some of the uh, investments there, as well as future, uh, future growth and, and, and enhancements of Amtrak Cascades and even future high-speed rail a little bit farther in the future, just outside of probably the horizon of this, uh, this long range plan is um, the extension of link light rail to downtown Everett in the late 2030s, uh, which feels like a long time away, but uh, we'll, we'll be here before we know it. Um, and uh, that'll bring light rail service even closer to Skagit uh, County and really be an opportunity for connections in the future. At the same time, uh, we've looked at how, um, how cities are planning to grow and how Skagit County is planning to grow. Um, the, the cities in, in the county, Anacortes, Burlington, Mount Vernon, and Cedro Woolley are each expected to grow by in population by uh, over 20% by 2045. And a lot of that growth is going into places that are either already served by Skagit Transit or are gonna be at densities that uh, make it more feasible to serve um, with fixed route bus service as well. So thinking about where future growth is happening um, also feeds into the opportunities for uh, future transit. And lastly, there's been um, major, major growth, major trends in uh, transit service delivery uh, in Washington and across the country that we're also taking into account. So more agencies have started uh, experimenting with microtransit uh, using a demand responsive service rather than fixed route service. So rather than a bus uh, stopping at every stop along a set route, uh, the microtransit serves more demand responsive within an area. Um, people can request uh, service either through an app or with a phone call. And uh, most agencies have tried to take um, an approach of serving about 20 to 30 minute uh, frequencies so that people, there'd be enough vehicles out there um, so that people could request uh, um, a, a trip and have a, have a response within 20 to 30 minutes and be taken point to point within that uh, micro transit zone. Um, so that's a new service, uh, service delivery approach doesn't currently exist in Skagit County, um, but is part of our considerations as part of this, this planning effort. So we have a, a couple of questions if folks have uh, thoughts on this, as you've um, heard, uh, heard some of these things. Um, and this could be about, you know, if, if for, for folks that are on this in this meeting, um, you can add comments into the um, into the chat or into the question and answer uh, box. How how some of these um, findings relate to your experience with Skagit? Uh, transit with transit in Skagit County, um, broader regional transit uh, experience, and or um, things that you might have heard from um, from people you talk with about transit in in the county, um, and really thinking about some of these night and weekend service. Uh, right now, Skagit Transit um, doesn't operate some routes on Sundays, uh, ends some routes uh, somewhat early in the evening, um, and then also on this. 
uh, idea of microtransit, um, what types of questions, whether that would, would uh, change trip patterns within the county. These are questions we're asking out in the uh, in in some public engagement events in person right now, but we're also uh, see, seeking any any thoughts that folks who are attending this virtual open house have. Okay, so um, Anna has a comment. Um, she would like, or uh, if she would like to, to take public transport more often, microtransit would be life changing for many clients who need last minute transport. Yeah, so that demand responsive service might be a little bit different than the current paratransit service, or um, really be be able to be uh, responsive to people's needs. That's a great comment. Right, I'll keep going, but if folks have any other thoughts or comments, feel free to add those into the chat and we'll capture all of those um, as, we, as we keep going. Um, one of the other uh, um, things that we would, would like to get some feedback, and we'll talk about this as we move into uh, some of the, the initial thoughts on recommendations, um, is about cross-county transit. We know uh, from some of the work we did this um, this spring that a lot of people take multiple, uh, take, use different agency trip, uh, use different agencies at the same time in their, in their trip, um, and want to understand how that connection works and, and what could make things, um, easier or, or different in terms of those connections to other transit agencies. Um, Eric, you've got a, Eric has a comment in the chat about, um, East County in, uh, the plan for microtransit, and we'll come back to that a little bit, and and maybe there's some um, discussion that that we can have about that. If there's a specific place in uh, East County that you're thinking of, um, maybe let us know about that as well, and uh, we can and talk through that. Um, but uh, also want to get any feedback folks have about uh, uh, connecting to some of these other services. So Eric's, um, Eric's comment about other zones was in relation to concrete. Concrete and further east. And further east, yeah. Um, so right now, uh, not yet, but I think that's, a, that's an important uh, place for us to, to talk through and, and we can, uh, it's great to get that feedback of where this type of a service would be would be useful for, for people. So as part of uh, my job, I'm currently working with the county and the city of Cedar Woolley on the comprehensive plans. And one of the um, biggest needs that we found in East County was transportation. Um, a lot of people are moving East County because rents are cheaper up there but they're having a harder time getting to their jobs or getting jobs or other services in general. And I know that currently, like every person that I, I heard that said, you know, transportation, which was probably close to a hundred um, between concrete all the way up to Marble Mount, said the current transportation plan is either non-existent or where it does touch them is absolutely useless. So I'm just wondering what what's your plan for East County? Is is it microtransit or is it something else? Yeah, it's a great point. So we'll jump in in a in just a minute to sort of talking through our, our draft recommendations. Um, uh, and um, would love to get feedback on on how those sound. Um, before we move on, uh, if, if anybody does have thoughts and, and comments on um, some of these connections to other transit agencies, we'd love to hear it um, either now or as we keep going.
There's another yeah. comment in the chat, Sam. Um, so this one is from Anna. Um, and she um, she says, my clients have a lot of need for transport in King County or Everett. Oftentimes it is difficult for them to utilize online resources to plan for their ride and know how much their ticket will be. Also lots of mobility and accessibility concerns. Uh, for context, uh, I work at the AAA, um, mostly with elders. So making sure people have that information, but we also know those those rides can be long and sometimes crossing over between one service and another can be, can be challenging to really understand what it takes. Okay, we'll move on. If anybody does have um, comments on, on the existing transit system, um, we're still we're very happy to, to take that. Um, as we move into talking about some of our draft recommendations for the long range plan, um, we've divided things into three different categories. One is on system level, thinking about the whole system, um, uh, thinking about things like frequency, how often a bus comes and the span of service, how long service goes from the morning into the evening, uh, days of the week and things like that. So that's one area of recommendations. The second is around regional connection opportunities. Some of these connections out into other places, um, how Skagit Transit connects into other places. And then uh, third is improvements to bus routing and schedules within, um, within Skagit County and in some, some focused areas. So we'll walk through them in that order um, and we'll go through uh, sort of big, big picture system-wide, then some of those connections out to other places and then working around the, the county um, talk about some of those local changes. So Eric will come back to East County uh, in that part as well. Uh, I want to be clear that most of these recommendations would require either additional operating hours, more, more service delivered and or vehicles. So more buses um, to, to deliver that service. And so would require additional resources beyond those that Skagit Transit has currently. So first at that big system-wide level is to expand the days and hours of service. Uh, this is to, this would be to provide seven day a week service on all routes. So have every route that Skagit Transit operates, operate each day of the week. And to um, have buses running at least every 60 minutes during most of the day. Um, we know that's an issue uh, in places like Concrete where service on the 70X is not uh, not on an hourly basis right now. Um, uh, we've, it's something we, we heard uh, from from riders that you know if it's if it's running less than every hour you really it's, it's hard to plan your trips and then also to extend evening service hours um, some of that also we heard from riders of spring around um, not being able to take a trip in the morning if you didn't know if you could catch the last trip in the evening or even choosing to uh, not take trips if you might get stranded someplace if the bus wasn't running and, and your um, shopping or your health appointment was done. Um, so really thinking about extending evening service hours to match up a little bit more with how people might uh, take trips. Uh, we also know that a lot of people take uh, Skagit Transit to Skagit Valley Community College. Um, uh, that's where the 204 is going in this picture. Uh, and um, we know that a lot of folks take evening classes at the college. And so trying to make sure that we're aligning some of the service patterns to match up with when the college is in session as well. When we think about some of the opportunities to strengthen regional connections, um, there's a lot of places that Skagit Transit is already serving out into, um, into important regional connections. Uh, and so we'll sort of go through this in a little bit of, of order. Um, uh, the ADX is serving, uh, WT, connecting with WTA service. Some of that service is provided by WTA. Um, we are you know, recommending continuing that service, connecting into Bellingham Station, all the connections that um, WTA is, is providing as well. And as I mentioned, 
they're planning for those um, next enhancements to, to WTA's service and routes as well. This is a really important connection to continue to make. Um, the connections to the uh, Anacortes Ferry Terminal and the Guimas Island Ferry Terminal, um, extending some of those uh, services uh, to, to operate every day of the week, um, uh, and also connect to uh, March Point, uh, park and ride. We'll talk a little bit more about some of the opportunities in a more localized uh, way, but really thinking about those as being very important connections out to the broader region. Um, the part of the region um, around Skagit Station, uh, connecting into South Mount Vernon, um, the, the highest ridership routes that Skagit Transit operates all, all connect at Skagit Station, really continue to reinforce that as the core of the system and, and connections uh, there. Um, and then thinking about uh, those opportunities down to the Smoky Point Transit Center. Skagit Transit doesn't currently serve, uh, serve that, but when that Community Transit Gold Line um, does connect with a bus rapid transit enhanced bus service to the Smoky Point Transit Center, there's an opportunity for Skagit Transit to connect in there and then continue uh, serving um, Everett Station and the connections to community transit and um, uh, and Everett Transit as well. Um, and then uh, and, and really connecting into everything that's that's in Everett. We'll talk a little bit about how when the uh, community transit does build the gold line, how some of those services might change and uh, what that could mean for, for Skagit Transit customers too, getting a, a better direct connection right into uh, downtown Everett as well. Um, the last thing I'll say here is that with the link extension to Linwood, Community Transit did a major restructuring of uh, service and has added a lot of service in Snohomish County. Um, that just that ha that change just happened um, uh, not even a month ago, and so uh, we're still seek seeking to understand how people are going to respond to some of those service changes. Um, there's some new express service from Stanwood. Um, and other changes to the community transit uh, service that have real important um, implications for how people might use Skagit Transit and uh, some of the, the providers in broader Northwest Washington. So we'll spend uh, the next uh, few minutes talking about those local service opportunities and getting into a little bit of the details within Skagit County, um, and then would love uh, feedback or questions as as you have them, as you uh, think about these um, uh, as we go through them. So really, these are all focused around streamlining routes to create more direct connections and uh, improve service in those high ridership areas. I mentioned one of those being the connections in um, to Skagit Station, but there's a lot of places where we see um, areas of higher ridership. There's a few places where there's some new service expansions. Um, those are somewhat limited just because of the amount of resources it would take to do to do a lot more. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about where we've started to think to look at piloting microtransit um, to provide that uh, broader coverage where extending fixed route service may not be the right, uh, the right solution. So we'll start with the center of the county um, in Burlington and Mount Vernon. Uh, there's a few places where there are one-way loops. Um, and we think there's an opportunity to make those into two-way routes that are uh, more direct, provide some more direct connection and reliable service for customers. Um, the one-way loops get you lots of places, but it's very hard to make uh, upstream trips on those. And so we think there's some opportunities to rethink those and make some two-way service. Uh, those three routes in, in this part of the county are the 101, 204, and the 206. Um, and so we've started to look at some of the routing changes that might, uh, might be possible to make some of those important connections to where people are already riding the service um, and where they might want to go. Uh, and really with the goal of trying to get to buses at least every 30 minutes within this sort of core area served by um, served already in in uh, in and around Skagit Station. 
We also know that there's some opportunities to improve safety and comfort at Skagit Station. There's so many trips that come to and through um, uh, through the uh, the station, um, people connecting to other regional services, to Amtrak, to things like that, um, that there are opportunities to continue to invest in safety and comfort there. Um, in the eastern part of the county, um, this is another place where um, there is, uh, there's an opportunity to change a one-way loop, the Route 300, that currently makes a lot of stops, connects a lot of different destinations, but does it in a one-way pattern. Think about a couple of uh, two-way changes there, um, looking at and making some new, some new connections as well. So connections to the Upper Skagit Reservation, um, to Job Corps, and to areas where there have been, uh, have been or are planned areas of growth in Cedar Woolley. Um, and I think this is also where the improvement of the 70X to hourly service um, could really provide some of that reliability, connecting with some of the other um, circulation options within, uh, within concrete. Going back to Eric's comment earlier, we haven't yet uh, planned for a micro transit area in concrete, but that's something as the service gets uh, piloted, I think that's a place where there could be some exploration of, of micro transit as well. So good to know that people are looking for those kinds of reliable transit services. Moving sort of clockwise around uh, to the connections to the south and into to and from uh, Snohomish County. I've talked a couple of times about the community transit gold line to Smoky Point. Um, and we think that when that happens, there's an opportunity for Skagit Transit to connect there with the 90X and then take a more direct route into Everett Station uh, from Smoky Point. Right now, the 90X uh, goes down I-5 and then comes through North Everett. Um, and that can be a long and somewhat unreliable trip uh, and connecting in with the places that community transit will eventually make these investments. So this is really looking out five plus years, but once that connection happens, there can be a much more reliable connection from uh, Skagit County into uh, downtown Everett, which I think would help um, all kinds of trips, both work and non-work. On the west side of the county, um, I think there's an opportunity to uh, reimagine some of the service in and connecting to Anacortes. Uh, providing more service to Anacortes Ferry Terminal, um, to the state ferries, um, thinking about uh, well, certainly seven day service, um, but uh, more frequent and reliable service there. This is also the first place that we've identified as a, as a potential on-demand transit zone, that micro transit service that I talked a lot about a little bit before. Um, if folks remember, a little bit farther back, there was that transit propensity area. Um, this is one of those areas with a little bit more transit propensity that doesn't have current uh, current service. And rather than trying to extend fixed route service throughout all of Fidalgo Island, microtransit might give um, a, a better uh, a better sense of where there's demand for transit and how to serve that a bit more effectively. Um, and then a lot of the service connecting to and from Anacortes really depends on transfers at March Point Park and Ride, um, and the facilities there um, uh, could be improved to, to make it a little bit more comfortable and inviting to wait uh, for uh, wait for or make those transfers at March Point. <clears throat> and finally, uh, continuing the, the clockwise journey, thinking about the northern part of Skagit, uh, Skagit County. Um, there's an opportunity to connect the ADX to the Skagit Casino Resort. Uh, it's one of the, the probably the higher employment areas in the county that doesn't currently have um, transit service. Uh, and then also some opportunity to think about a micro transit zone in this area that might uh, better support agricultural areas um, where trips aren't really very well served by 
traditional fixed route transit um, in the same way as they might be having some flexible micro transit that feeds people into the, um, the fixed route transit network. <clears throat> So we want to pause there, um, ask for feedback, uh, how these draft recommendations, uh, whether it would make trips easier, whether it would encourage more transit use, um, and uh, if there are some other opportunities that we should be considering. Um, Eric, you started us on this path earlier, um, but any, any thoughts that folks have about how these uh, these transit trips might work, uh, what would be, uh, what questions you might still have, what opportunities it might open up for you or for people you work with. Um, so Anna, Anna has another question. Um, how much would, would micro transit cost for the writer? Yeah, that's a great question. And that probably depends a little bit on um, how the pilot would, would work and not something we have answered quite yet with Skagit Transit. Um, if you look at uh, a service like Metroplex in King County, um, that's a similar sort of service. Uh, uh, the, there is a cost to the riders. It's roughly, uh, it's equivalent to a transit fare. It's not, um, it's not a whole lot more. Um, uh, it's, it's right around, I think, it, Pricing is generally right around what a normal transit fare would be, but that's uh, something that would have to be uh, evaluated and, and sort of figured out from a financial state sustainability perspective as well. And usually riders um, uh, in, in, with Metroflex, um, I believe that you have to pay with an ORCA card, uh, the sort of fare card that King County Metro uses. Um, I think there are some other ways to pay for that service as well, but collecting payment would be likely consistent, um, although usually not with cash uh, because of the challenge of having multiple drivers and, and uh, some of the, the aspects of, um, of microtransit that are different from a fixed route bus. So it's a good question and maybe one we can follow up on as well. Other question, uh, what ideas are there to increase safety at a station? Yeah, so I think there's some, there's a variety of ways to think about um, lighting and some of the facilities at Skagit station um, that uh, can help help with people with the comfort and, and some of the security at, at the station. Um, That I think there's a there's a number of different ways to, to think about that, but we've heard from uh, from riders and from transit operators that that's an important priority. So I'm not the fastest typer, so I'm going to talk again to Zerk. Um, so I think the microtransit would, you know, depending on where it was at within the county, um, is actually not a bad idea. Um, <clears throat> I still have a big concern. And, you know, in those particular areas, um, I can give plenty of examples over the years of, you know, we had, we served um, six disabled adults who were pooling their resources in a house. But the problem is, is not, is between the six of them, they had like four cars and they couldn't afford to get any of them fixed. And where they lived, you couldn't even get um, dial a ride or paratransit to pick them up. So they had absolutely no access to any service whatsoever. And that was in Day Creek. And then for myself on a personal note is, you know, a few years ago, we moved to an area that there again is not on a transit line. My son is on the spectrum. Um, you know, he's on social security. And we thought that because we were like a mile and a half away from, you know, the uh, park and ride there in Alger, that we should be able to get paratransit so he can make it to his appointments and services on his own, you know, for a little bit of independence and growth as a person. 
Well, come to find out, we moved to an area that, you know, SCAT told us to talk to WTA and WTA told us to talk to SCAT. So, you know, my big concern is, is there's still a lot of areas that are, are, won't be covered under this. And these are areas that, that people literally have to move to because they can't afford to live in Mount Vernon or, you know, Burlington or Anacortes. Um, you know, and I'll bring up my East County one again, you know, an hourly trip up to concrete. Great idea. I love that. That would be way more useful than what it has been in the past. But you go beyond concrete, you go into Rockport, you go into Marble Mount. There's hundreds of people up there that would use transit to get to services, to get to the grocery store, um, to, you know, maybe even get to work um, at Janicky in, in Hamilton if they had transit to at least get to concrete, if that makes sense. Yep. Yep. It's great. Great feedback. Really appreciate it. All right, really appreciate this feedback. Um, and um, I'll move on a little bit. Um, and I see another comment from Anna in the chat about, uh, about rural transit access um, and transportation to the East County Resource Center. Um, we want to make sure we, we spread the word about ways to continue involvement. We've been out the last few weeks out uh, doing some in-person events, gotten some really good feedback along the lines of what we're hearing today. Um, and we want to make sure that uh, everybody has an opportunity to, to comment uh, on, on these connection issues. Um, so there's a few ways, and I'll talk through, talk through those. Um, we have... Uh, a couple of ways to provide some direct comments on the draft recommendations that we've got um, and a survey. Um, so, uh, and, and some of these are um, other than, we have some in-person events and we have some online tools. And we know that uh, some, sometimes technology can be hard for providing some of these comments, uh, but we do have this online map that you can access with this um, uh, QR code. Uh, we'll also, uh, have a link on the next slide, and we can drop that link in the chat as well. Um, that takes you, that public coordinate system takes you to a map of the existing service and uh, these draft recommendations so that you can explore and you can add comments uh, directly onto that map. Um, there is a request for an email um, uh, that uh, just in case we have questions, but if you don't feel comfortable sharing your email, you can. Uh, put in, you can make one up as long as it looks like an email, it'll, it'll let you continue to the map. Um, so Haley just dropped a link to our survey, um, and then uh, we'll have a link to this uh, public coordinate system as well to help provide feedback. We also have upcoming uh, in-person events. Um, so uh, we will be, uh, we and Skagit Transit staff will be um, at uh, in Cedro Woolley uh, at the Veterans Stand Down uh, this Friday, um, next Tuesday in Concrete at a, a an open house at the Concrete Community Center. Um, uh, meet it, uh, and then the next two Saturdays, the 26th and Saturday the second, um, at some other public events here, um, where we are really encouraging. Uh, uh, people to stop by. Um, we were out at the Anacortes Farmers Market last weekend, uh, the Mount Vernon Farmers Market the weekend before. Got some really great feedback. Uh, that's all going into this mix as we take uh, take comments and feedback on uh, on on what we found so far, how people are using the the Skagit Transit system today, and um, where there might be opportunities to the future. So. Um, please share this information uh, out with, with others and we want to get as much feedback as we can. Great, Eric, thanks for sharing your information. We will definitely reach out. Um, and just next steps and then we'll, we'll send everybody on their way. 
Um, we're out right now getting feedback, getting uh, input on how people use the system today and how they would like to, what people think about the draft recommendations. The goal is to have this into a uh, final long range transit plan in, in the winter of uh, this winter going into next year um, so that uh, schedule transit can really start to implement um, uh, into 2025 as resources become available um, and uh, have some more in direct um, engagement on some of the individual changes that might happen. Um, so this is the people's last chance to, to comment and provide feedback on some of these changes as, um, as some of the ideas that are in the long range plan uh, get closer to, to reality as, um, as there's the available resources to implement those, there still be opportunities to, to shape those uh, possibilities into the future. So with that, uh, I think that is the end of our uh, presentation. Um, if anybody has any additional questions or, or feedback, we're happy to hear it. Um, and, uh, and please help spread the word about these upcoming opportunities. We will be doing another uh, uh, virtual open house this evening at uh, six o'clock. Um, same, same content uh, overall. Uh, we will also, uh, we have been recording this. Uh, we will uh, post that up on the, um, on the Skagit Transit website um, uh, where anybody who missed this can also catch up, probably watch me in at, at twice, twice the speed so you get through it all a little bit quicker than I got through it today. Great, thank you everybody for joining. Really appreciate the participation um, and look forward to your continued engagement and feedback uh, as we go forward with this process.